In all the world, only a very small percentage of straight pool players have ever had a 100 ball run. Dallas West has done it hundreds of times. He's done it in world tournaments, and he's done it in practice sessions with his friends. And while a 100 ball run is a tremendous accomplishment, Dallas can boast of a high run of 468. His mastery of the game of straight pool was demonstrated in 1975 when he was crowned the United States Open straight pool champion. Well, a few weeks ago, I talked to Dallas West about doing a videotape of a 100 ball run in straight pool. And then during the playback, having him explain what goes through his mind while he continues to run rack after rack. Why he chooses to play one ball instead of another. What kind of English he prefers to use in a particular situation how he goes about determining which ball will be his next break shot. Does he have a pretty good idea of the shot sequence he'll use to clear the table? And does he ever change his mind in the middle of a rack and do it a different way? What are his views on the various position and stroke techniques? But first of all, what are the chances of setting up a break shot and running 100 balls? Oh, I can do that, said Dallas. I do it all the time in my pool room in Love's Park. Well, here we are at Dallas West Pro Billiards in Loves Park, Illinois, to see how and if it can be done. Dallas, you're about to set up your initial break shot. Is this uh, what you would consider an ideal break shot? Uh, yes, it is. On the left-hand side of the rack, for a right-handed player, it's the easiest to get at, and the most right-handed players like it on that side of the rack. You have a choice mm -hmm. of setting up any break shot that you uh, like, and that's the one that you did choose. So, uh, you kind of need if that one come up at the end of each rack, wouldn't it? Yes, it would be. It's ideal. Now, you didn't go through the rack on the break shot. You came off the rack. Uh, is this the way you prefer to play so that your cue ball is out in the end rather than piling through the ball? Yeah, it depends a lot on the angle. If I have a real sharp angle and I have to go through the rack, then I want to bust them open and go into maybe the end rail after I go through the rack. But otherwise, yeah, I have a high angle on that one where I hit the top of the rack and try to keep the cue ball out in the center of the table. Well, here we're uh, three or four balls into the... Uh, into the first rack. Do you have uh, uh, an idea here yet of what you're going to be uh, using to get into the second rack? Well, basically, I'd like to use the ball over on the, the left-hand side of the table, which I believe is a 10 ball. And uh, now I have to work around these balls and try to leave that 10 ball. These balls are open up pretty good uh, right now. I'm in a position right here where I have to, I have to watch it. I have a bad ball over here on the rail. Come over for it right here and hit the ball a little bit below the center and just move the ball over to the ball. Getting a little angle. Right. Right. Two balls here. I have to uh, have to get out of here. Draw the ball back. And now it does look for sure like you'll be using that, that ten ball or that dark but strike. But I, I have a bad angle now. I'll have to shoot this ball and try to come between those two balls and come over and hit the ten ball. So this, this creates a little bit of a problem for me right now. Well, you played the ball to ball billy perfectly. You see that a lot in straight pool, uh, uh, playing ball to ball billy, landing against another ball to help you in your position. Yeah, with a, with a player that's been playing as long as I have, uh, I play uh, uh, three cushion billiards also, and it really helps me a lot in straight pool. How long have you been playing? I've been playing 29 years. And professionally? 20 years. 
Looks like the nine ball is to be. Oh, here on you come up a little light on this one, didn't you? Yeah, I come up short on this one, and I have to use right hand English and center and spin it to hold the ball to get on the pitch. Well done. In those uh, 20 years of uh, professional billiards, you've won a lot of tournaments. How many have you said? I've won in the neighborhood of 90 tournaments. Just about every title there there is in pool. Including the U.S. Open Championship. Plus the World Open Nine Ball Championship in 1979. Most of the tournaments are nine ball nowadays, aren't they? Yeah, it's a game that uh, you can take a, a young player and let him play for a year, and you're going from the one to the nine, and it's... Uh, much easier for him to get involved in tournaments. Where this game here, straight pool, takes many years of learning different patterns and execution. Straight pool, you use your head a lot more, where in nine ball, you've got to execute a lot more. Right. Now that break ball was a little bit higher than the one that you originally said. Uh, I hit this one a little off center because I didn't want to follow it and go down into the ball and get tied up. Here I'll come over with a slight draw and try to stay a little high, try to hit some two balls right in there underneath the 10 ball. Well, you've got several easy shots, but already you've got to start thinking ahead now to see what are we going to do about the rack number three. Moving some balls out beside the rack. Move that five ball up there. I had a notion of taking it out right there, but I felt that if I can get in and come around and get that 10 out of there, I could break them all the way. So out of here, I'll try to get on the, I'll go up on the eight. Try to get an angle on the eight. Got a little straighter there than you wanted. Yes, I did. So uh, I wanted to come down more on this here and get on the two ball. So I could come up into the rack for protection. Have and you wound ball. up a little straight on this one too, didn't you? Right. So now I have to play it a little different. So there is a lot of improvisation. Everything doesn't just work out the way you, uh, you planned to start with. No, it's uh, just years and years of practice, and I've probably shot in four or five million balls. What are you going to be doing here now? I'll shoot the one, and I'll come out in front on the combination on the 510, trying to break the balls and try to leave the five in the area where the ten's at for the following break. The combination is fairly straight, so you still have an angle with your cue ball where you can go into the clutch. Right. It's not a big issue. Yeah. And the ball's broke beautifully. Now on this shot, I have the, I believe it's the 12 ball, where I'll shoot it in and come two rails and get on the 8. This way I can still leave my 5. I, I don't have anything else to work with other than that right at the moment. I came too far in this shot. Now I have to shoot the shot the same way with two rails that come on the two ball. I must get fairly well perfect on this. And avoid hitting the five at the same time. Right. Now I'm home free. Now I just shoot this in and stop there. Now here I can see that your break shot is going to be on the player's right side, right hand side of the table. What's the disadvantage of that? Uh, the disadvantage is that me being a right handed player, I like to break shot on the left where I can reach the ball. Now you'll notice that I'll come up high with the cue ball so that I can reach the ball better. I'll come up by the side pocket more. Now I can reach that shot nice. If the break shot is on this side of the table, you can stand beside the table, whereas if it's, if it's on the other side, you've got to stand back at the end of the right. room. So, so, so the cue ball comes back a little further. Right. So then a left-handed player usually likes to shoot with a break shot on that side of the table that I'm on right now. If you take Steve Mizrak, this would be something that he would prefer more. I would like the exact the same angle and probably the same position on the other side. And uh, the cue ball did come out just about perfectly. It's straight up and down the table from us. We have a nice angle to go into the rack. Will you go through the rack here or will you draw the cue ball off the rack? Uh, this one here I'll draw off the rack. Seems to me I remember seeing you on occasion hit this shot very hard with draw and draw through the end rail and back down the table again. I have done this in the past, but uh, you strive for more control. The more control you get into your game, uh, the better it is uh, to turn it loose when you go too far. So you did come back a little further here than you wanted. I went so. back about three feet further than that. I have a very, very tough execution shot to come up with here. What are you, what are you trying to do on this shot now? 
Well, I, I would like to hit it with a firm draw and, and uh, make sure that I make the ball and come out maybe for the 10 above the rack, but it's a dangerous shot, and I might pull him to the 8th, so I'm going to hit this with a center, center ball and float down to come off the rail for the 14. Speed is all important in the shot, so it just loses the spin if it gets there and kills. Right, very important, very tough shot to execute. On this particular shot now, I'll, I'll go two rails above the rack, for the pin ball, to so re-break the ball. Yeah. High right hand English. Perfect speed once again. Now uh, you can, you'll draw the ball into the rack from the... No, I'll hit this with a high ball. And you're shooting left-handed rather than using the, break, the uh, bridge. I've been playing very many years this way, and I know it's contrary to uh, proper teaching, and I would not recommend the uh, average player to do this. But uh, I've uh, run 50 balls many times, and I'm very accurate. What's your high run left-handed, if you don't mind my asking? 87 balls. So you not only will play a shot that just requires making... Uh, what are you doing here, Lux? High right, and I'm going to go through the balls and come off the rail. You're actually driving the ball you played a billiard on into the rack to break them, rather than using the cue ball itself. Right. Ball to ball billiards once again. Running a little interference for the cue ball. And they broke beautifully, didn't they? Here you don't have anything within six inches of anything. It should be ABC for him. What's the break shot? <laughs> The sixth ball on the far side of the table. Over on your favorite side. Right. Now here I drift a little bit too far, so I want to keep the one on the side. Just hit it with a little bit of a soft draw. Creating an angle on the 15, so that when I shoot this 15, I use the billiard again. I'll bump the three. I wasn't happy the way I, that I just bumped that shot because I bumped it a little high. I wanted you to bump it lower. A little closer to the pocket. Huh? Right. Now I have to go the other direction. We have to make changes to this. Once in a while. So you don't get stubborn and stick to your original plan. If something goes a little bit awry, you've got to improvise. Right. Now here, what are you trying to do? You're trying to come down on that ball? I'm trying to get it for the side pocket so that I can move it now. I, being that I bumped the ball, I have an option. I can either stop this and put the ball down the corner or draw it back to the pocket, which I elect to do. And bring it back. I'll hit this shot with right hand English and spin off the rail on the center of the table. And there we are with the textbook break shot once again. Now, usually I'll be a little bit tighter on these type of break shots, meaning that I'll be about six or eight inches down towards the six form. But I'm playing, um, there are different styles of straight forward, where you can just open the balls up in one shot and, uh, and run them off. Uh, but what I'm doing here is I'm playing more of a control type ball run to where I'm hitting balls and controlling the cue ball and I'm only knocking out four or five balls from the rack and working around the ball. That has a lot to do with uh, how much pool you've played lately and how, how well you feel you're in stroke at the time, doesn't it? Yes, plus the conditions. If it's very, very wet and the balls won't open up good for you, then you have to work around the ball. The, and which wasn't the case in this particular case. The conditions were nice. Have you been playing uh, a lot of straight pool lately? No, I haven't been playing at all. I've been playing these nine ball tournaments and I really miss playing this game. And yet you can jump up and run 100 balls on command. It's really remarkable. Well, we hope you can run 100 balls on command. We're going to see what's, yeah. what's happening here. Right. <laughs> I get an angle here on this particular shot. I hit it below center, and I come down a little further than I like to on this Uh-huh, the balls didn't cooperate. No. That, that was my fault. I, 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 I wish that I would have drawn the ball more on this particular shot, but we're still all right. I have a, I have a shot here that I have to execute on the 11 ball, which is a tough shot. You'll have to use, you won't be able to play this left-handed. No. This you use the mechanical bridge. How about some tips on using the mechanical bridge? Well, you should, uh, once you, uh, you put it in your left hand and you, and you lay the bridge down on the bed, holding it firmly so the bridge doesn't move on you. Taking the right hand, holding it on the end of the cue, and cue center ball. Now, you almost overcut that ball. I, I play on any shot that I have to hit firm. I hit the shot where I play the overcut you have a tendency, when you go to hit a shot hard, to undercut the ball. Well, now, once again, we can see the ball is broken.
very well. Again, you've got several possible break shots down at this end. Your cue ball went up the other end, but another ball fortunately came along with you, so things are going your way. What are you doing on this? You're going to cut this ball on the side, and... I don't want to hit the nine ball on this shot because it's a, it's a potential break shot. I'm trying to hit the one ball on this. It's ball to ball billiards. Yeah, right. And you did. Now, the way that this turned out... It was very unlucky. Very unlucky. <laughs> so now I have to change my strategy. Now, the break shot on the other side of the table, I left two balls with the break shot. So I will have to shoot that ball off, which is a five ball. And it's a tough shot. I got like two-thirds of the pocket, so I have to hit this ball softly and follow two of these. Now, this ball, I just hit it with a little low right and slide it into the rail to bounce off to the middle. Shouldn't have any trouble from here, huh? We hope <laughs> I believe it's a uh, seven ball, it's a one ball where I have to hit and come two rails. I have two options here. I can use the low ball or this ball that I'm using here now. I come up and bump this ball. Come up and bump the four and keep my cue ball in position for the, for the I believe it's the ten ball. Mm -hmm. Now the, the two ball is, is in line with the nine ball. It's just about where you want to be where to I break be. the ball. Right. And this shot, I hit this shot a little easier. If I hit it harder and come off the rail more, I could have gotten on this side pocket shot perfectly. What you're trying to do is get straight on that two ball, and you came just sure. a little shy. Right. So now I'll have to hit this with a little high right once again, slow down to the rail and come off the rail. So you had a good idea there, but then you had to execute to... Uh, to finally get on the break shot, and you probably didn't come down as far as you would like. No, to. you're right. I would have liked to come down about another 18 inches. Would have made the shot considerably easier. Right. This is my hand. And this is a. <laughs> this is kind of high on the rack too. This nine ball, isn't it? It's up above the rack just a bit. It's right about at the second ball because of the angle that I'm cutting the ball. So the cue ball should come about into the second ball, and I'll hit this with a. I'll hit this with more of a center to low right hand ball, so that if I slide down off the balls, I'll spin off the rail. In fact, what you're doing here is taking a good look to see exactly where your cue ball will hit the rack. Right. Now this one does pretty much what I expected it to do. I, mean, I would like to have had a little more speed on the ball. Combination time, huh? You got to play uh, position when you're playing combinations too. You Absolutely. Can. Now here's a shot here that's a little tricky that uh, you could get in trouble on, but uh, it, you shouldn't get in trouble. On. I'm going to You could get in trouble if you tried to draw the ball to this side of that right. stripe and wind up behind the solid. If I bury your disc and bump it, now I have a nice little angle to go up into the ball. And you can break this cluster apart a bit. Sixty. choices here that I have to make. I can either shoot that 10 ball on the side and that 15 will come by this ball in this corner pocket. It will pass in here, yes. But that ball is out. It's beyond the line. It's a potential break shot. So I elect to, to go a little bit uh, tougher way, but if, uh, there's reward in it. If I get up on this 15, then I can break the 10, but I don't get quite high enough, so now what I do is I hit the 2 and the 10. And I missed it. I missed the three and two. Or is there? Uh huh. Three so the three and ten remain together, and let's see if that'll come back to haunt you. Yeah, but right now it looks real bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, neither of the, either of those two balls can't be made in any pocket, so you're going to have to uh, disturb them a little bit at one point here. Right. On this particular shot, I tried to get over far enough to do it then. Didn't but quite get on the I, one front. I got too straight on the one. So now you'll try it again. Right. Another thing about two balls that's in trouble like this, when you got about six or seven balls on the table, you should elect to try to get an angle on those, on those two balls right away. Don't take too much time, because half the rack is gone. If you wait to get down to one ball, like you'll see what happens here. Uh, well, here, in fact, you can, you can fail two or three times and still have a, a further opportunity to break them. Whereas right. if you saved it till the end, you'll, you'll miss that one opportunity, and it's the end of the run. That's right. Now, you're too straight on the two to break them at this point. Right. But you've taken a look to see what angle you will need later on. So I elect to play this the hard way, really. Because, uh, 
the way the balls were laying, uh, they might come back to haunt me if I don't get the ball under the rail. Straight pool is played pretty much at this uh, other end of the table, isn't it? You know, to be 90, 95 percent uh, of the ball return into the table. And four pockets is basically what we use. We don't want to shoot them in the other pockets. Now, what you want to do here is put your cue ball right against the rail, right. like that. Now, the thing that's a little that I'm looking for here on this shot is that I have to worry about passing that 14, and I want to hit the three ball with the cue. 68. But instead, I missed the three ball, and I hit the 14. Complicating matters again. Right. So now I have a decision here. I have now you've got the wrong angle on the three to come down for the ball on the short rail. So you've got to put position on the on the ball you were saving for your break shot. That's right. 69. Now I get where I have a little angle here, and I don't want to come down too much on this, but I roll this with a little bit of a high right just to come off the rail and turn a little bit. That's enough room to get by the rack. Now what's the danger of having a break shot behind the bundle like this? If you elect to hit this shot too hard, the impact of the, when you're going into the rail, you'll hit the rack too solid, and uh, it'll, uh, the cue ball won't go any place. So, you know, so you have to take and shoot this shot at a medium speed with a low right-hand ball so that you drag more towards the center of the rack, center to corner, meaning to where the, the side of the rack where the cue ball is at now. The right I want to go back that way. If you come up into that uh, corner ball on the left or the ball next to it, you're liable to wind up with nothing to play. Right. You're pretty much, uh, you're really in trouble if you do that. Anytime you go into a rack, you want to go into a rack at an angle with the cue ball coming off. Okay, so what you're trying to do is come back into that two ball or three ball. And then spin off that rail over there. Mm -hmm. So I hit this with a low left-hand ball. Not too hard. Just medium, medium. 71. So you actually hit the center ball, but everything came out all right. Looks like you've got a shot. In this particular shot here, I have one ball in the side pocket. And I'll follow up trying to get straight in on this combination. That's the combination. Oh, I see. The combination that we're looking directly right. at. But now I went just a little bit too far for control. And so instead of shooting this, I elect to come around and shoot the three ball. To create a better angle for myself so that I can hold the six after I make the nine for a break shot. So I can break the ball out the six. So if the six just moves slightly to your left, the ball to break that puck. That's right. Like that. Now I have protection when I break them here. I have the two balls. Rather than shoot the two and then the six, I could have problems for myself. So I can break these turrets off and still have two for protection and try to get a break shot out in the process. And there it is, the uh, 15 or the dark strike. Now I have a problem here because these balls are laying a little funny. So what I'll do is shoot the, the two ball down the corner pocket. 76. Now I'm thinking I have three balls ahead right now. Two and I was figuring on the five. I have trouble reaching this one, so I elect to shoot this one left hand. I draw the ball with a little low left, coming out to the two ball. And you'll break the stack from behind then. Right. Now what I have to worry about here is if it's too soft. And again, you're playing the yeah. end, but even on a, a, a shot that requires the finesse of that one. I say again, once again, Tom, you, 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 as you know, you're a very good straight pool player and been playing the game for many, many years. That uh, in a shot like uh, in that position there, I would recommend a player you. 79. Uh, I've been playing so many years that way, left-handed, and I'm very accurate that way. I miss very few balls that way or lose very many games by shooting that way. Whereas in a lot of instances, you see players that will change hands and lose games because they shoot a shot. That way. You're uh, you're playing today in a uh, in a vest. Is, uh, is this the kind of attire you prefer to play in? Remember, years ago we had to play in the in sports coats, which was kind of cumbersome. Right. I, well, I agree. I, I, but I I feel this way about about the sport of pool, like all other sports. We have our attire that we have to wear, and uh, we just must adapt to it, or else uh, we're in trouble.
What's the game plan here? What's going on on the table right I'm now? I'm worried about if I shoot this ball a bump in the eighth, so instead I elect to shoot this ball and bump to seven for control so that I don't get tied up. So you don't tie up your brake shot. Right. You're liable I've, to go over there. That's right. Now I shoot the eight in the side. And just float just a little bit. Seven in the corner. Just about the right angle. I just hit this with a little high left. Come off the rail. Put me in the center of the table where I can reach the shot. And that's just about the brake shot that you started this whole run with, isn't it? The ideal brake shot, the one you like to do. Normally, if I'm playing straight pull every day and I'm, and I'm in a, a dead, dead stroke, as the term is used in pool, uh, I will be 95 to 98 percent of the time I will be on the right hand side. Now, once again here, you've got the option. Do you go through the bundle or do you draw off it? I hit this with a draw to come off. Yeah, the camera gives us a little better angle. I see you're a little farther to the center of the table, so uh, so you can probably pull it back to the center. I'm hitting down towards the last two balls in the rack, the last two or three balls in the rack. If you get any lower than that, then you have to rip them. You have to hit the ball with a high ball, go into the end rail, and come spin back to the ball. So shoot it this way for control. See, now I crotched both of those balls on the corner of the rack, creating them balls to spread pretty nice like mm -hmm. that. If I hit one ball, I'm dead, because it's, uh, I'll lock up against the rack. Now, you'd consider this a trouble. There's something that has to be taken care of. You've got four balls along that one rail. They've got a dependency. Right. This is a very bad situation for me because I don't have anything. This ball won't go in the corner past here in the rack. So now what I'll do is I'll shoot the nine, and I'll try to float down a little bit when I come off the rail, an angle on the seven where I can go into the rail and break them. I've done here, I didn't come down far enough. So now I have to take and come back and get on the eight. So you I can can't draw it past the eight, though. You're no. going to spin it up. Right. That's another billiard shot where you have to get the rail and spin up past the ball. Now here, rather than shoot over the ball, I like that angle, but rather than shoot over it, I'll shoot the two first. I see. Now you get the cluster apart once again. I have a real bad ball in the rail, a 15 ball. It's going to this level to haunt me. The way these balls broke, it You're saying, bad. whoa there, six ball. That's right. I'm praying <laughs> that that six stop. <laughs> because now all I have is I have a very tough shot on a combination of the five and the side. Oh, I see. Well, let's pull that camera back again. Let's see what you've got to contend with here. None of those balls can be made, obviously. No. The three could be made in the side, except there's something in its way, isn't there? That's the five ball. Right there. This is... Uh, there's a high degree of difficulty connected with this one, huh? Split the pot. Uh, right on, a, on a scale from 1 to 10, I would have to give that a 9 or a 10. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're still going to have trouble here. You've got to get those balls apart. They can't be made anywhere. Right. I have two options. I can shoot, Tom, I can shoot the 3 here and go to the end rail and get on the 15 and, and then try to come off the rail, but I have to get perfect on it, then get on the 12 and break these balls. Mm -hmm. But I elect to shoot this and draw this around the three because this four ball down here by my hand will go in the other pocket, but just barely go in the other but pocket. But just barely. So I bumped that ball. I didn't mean to bump it, but uh, I did, and uh, I'm in good shape here. You're looking at the four very closely, so it apparently it can barely be made. Is there a way that you can uh, give yourself a little added insurance on that? Yeah, I use extreme left-hand spin and, and try to come in and crotch these two balls because the English will make the shot a lot of times to turn the ball. All right, well, we're, uh, we're well into this run now, Dallas. You've got four balls left on the table. I can't even imagine what your break shot's going to be here. Well, I can only, I'm going to try to do something here. When I shoot the combination, 96. the next shot that I shoot, when I draw back, I'm trying to draw back and hit this 10, either to drive it up uh, towards the side pocket and maybe come over for the 15 on the rail. Too far to shoot the 15, but I missed the 10. So now what I have to do 
is I can, uh, I have to stop this ball. I have options. I can either shoot this and draw back to where the cue ball's at and try to shoot the 15 up in the rail and draw into the stack one rail, which is a very tough shot. So what I elected to do is that the 10 ball is in the rack. So instead here, I, I stop and take ball in hand behind the head screen. All right, well, you're only two balls shy of this 100-ball run now, but uh, this, this is an awful position. You're a long way from it, aren't you? It's an awful position to be in when you run 98, <laughs> and then you have to play that kind of an angle and break shot. But this is what makes it fun and stimulating for, for all of the Well, now you've got the cue ball in hand. Tell us what you're going to try to do here. Well, I, I'm, not, I'm certainly not going to bang them, and I have to take an angle where I don't, do not want to hit high on the rack. I want to hit low on the rack. The bottom two balls is what I would like to hit on the rack uh, so that the cue ball comes sliding down off the rack. And all I, I'm not, not going to hit it with a hard speed, so I'm going to hit this with a little high left, hoping that when I make the ball and hit the rack, that I will have one shot. Well, everybody's got happens. their fingers crossed. 99. Oh, we got it. We got it. Yeah, I got it. We got it. Six gotta balls. make this ball. One hundred. This is number one hundred. The 100-ball run you have just seen happened exactly as you saw it. The camera and recorder were on continuously. The videotape is completely unedited. This program was a production of Video Idea Productions Limited.